So I used to do corn long ago, the, the big grown wheat and oats and all that kind of the stuff. Yeah. And how did that work out? Oh, that what was good. There was yeah. like, you know, yeah. there was... Uh, would many f uh, farms have it now? They would. Every mm. farmer might have two or three strikes of oats, you know, for his own use. That bring it in, get it crushed or ground for cattle or whatever, and the uh, straw, you know, would be used for feeding and that kind of thing, mm. you know. And uh, in terms of acres, how many acres would that be? Do you have it yourself at home now, Chief? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, on the land. Do you have corn? Oh, yeah, we did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So in your farm, what was it like in your farm that time? What did you have? You had well, uh, in our farm, I meant to talk about that. Uh, we had only 14 acres. 14 acres. Seven right. arable and seven medium. Mm. Uh, not good. Mm. We had uh, oats, potatoes, and vegetables. We had a garden around the house for vegetables mm. and that kind of thing, mm. you know. <laughs> we had about two stacks of oats and a reek of hay. We had two cows. And they'd have two calves. Now, it was only a small farm at 14 acres. Well, very small, not yeah. good land, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, compared to our, one of our neighbours had 52 acres. The ends had 52 acres. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, so most most of the farmers around were more or less the same thing, Dad. Oh, yeah. Except some had more than well, others. Well, that 30 acres and that different, you know, we, yeah. were, small acre, we were small acreage. Mm -hmm. And uh, then... We, as I said to you, we had two cattle. Now, we sell two cattle every year. Mm. That was kind of the farmer's bank. Mm. And we'd rear two pigs, and we'd sell those. Now, the two pigs were brought to town. Tommy Nolan on James Street used to buy pigs for the Castle Bear Bacon Factory. And he had a place for weighing them and all that down at the, in the, at the back of the Garda station on James Street. Mm -hmm. And you went down there, you had your pig weighed, you come up to the shop, he paid you, to have a drink, he had everything there, he had a big shop. That's, he was further now of Tommy Nolan Chemist. And what, uh, in that, in where Tommy had the chemist shop? Oh, Is that for his no, shop? No, no, across the road on the other side, oh, where Jack, the brother was. Where the pub, Jackie, Jackie is, okay, right, yeah. yeah. <coughs> and, uh, and what did you get for a pig? I might get eight pounds or some ten pounds mm. after feeding them for the whole year. But as I say, along with turquoise maybe and geese, you'd have all this to sell at Christmas. Okay. And you, you went in and shopped and got the Christmas. And if you bought a pound of tea, you got a pound of tea. <laughs> pound for pound. Whatever you bought, you got the same. Okay, yeah, all right. right yeah, 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 get, uh, yeah, and yeah. the big red candles for the window, <laughs> the white ones. But anyway... To go back to the farm and what you asked me there about the cattle, we'd head off in the morning, they were walk to Westport, two cattle, you'd join up with neighbours coming along, I leave four or five o'clock, leave Napa, walking in, and there was no fences along the road, they were wild, they were never out on the road before, they'd go <laughs> through the mountain there at Farmer. <laughs> in after them, you'd be wish when you'd arrive in town. Straight in, into the top of High Street, and the cattle dealers would be up there meeting to see what did you want for this beast, that beast, you know, train you out. But the cattle were from the top of High Street to where the clock was now. The mm -hmm. clock wasn't there, that was known as the fountain. Mm. There was a fountain there and there were steps over Mill Street, all the way over the Fairbury, up to the convent gate. Big cattle generally up at the convent Full gate. Full of cattle. Full of cattle. Dealers from Roscommon and all over that part of the country used to come to buy them. Do you remember any of their names? O'Brien's Knockrockery. Did Bert, uh, Bruton's, uh, Bruton come down well, from? Bruton, he was uh, the, of the Tisha fame. They yeah. used to come, surely. Yeah. I heard that, yeah. yeah. Bruton, mm -hmm. well, he came from the Midlands, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And them cattle, when you sold, you were told to bring them to the station. Mm walk up to the station, but the men along the side there, I often look at the side now, and, and they're berailed, and then they pay you. That's the siding in front you know, it's of the, the station house, yeah, yeah. on the left hand side, and, the facing know, in. Now there's another one called the Cattle Pass, from the Cattle Pass, no? Well, it must be the Cattle Pass. Off to the convent. You go up a steep hill there. No, no. No. No, no it had to be level, the train was pulling in alongside. Mm. You know, 
at one end, if you pass the station house, at one end, then it juts out. That's right. Well, that's where you That's where you, that's where you end up, okay. You right. went along there. Yeah, yeah that's where, yeah. Okay, right. And I remember one night being there until 2 a.m. on November's night because the train they had booked was full, so I had to send you at loan for another. Right? And you need to wait. And they would pay you until the cattle were railed. Right? And the story is told about this fella, like, you know the red 20 pound note? You yeah, remember, yeah, them? I remember them, yeah. And they'd be paying, like, but they'd have a double top. <laughs> Count the one twice. <laughs> double over. But they wouldn't pay you until they were railed. Or say, were they hard to deal with, cattle job? Or cattle? I know, no, they were, no, they were, no, no, no. They were honest, they were pretty honest. They were honest, they? Yeah, yeah, they were fine, you know, in those mm. times. It was just a matter of, yeah. that's the way the transport was. There was they'd have to, later on then there'd be trucks, and the trucks would be all down there as distillery road now, mm. you know. Mm. And they'd load them on trucks and take them away. But um, I'm going away back, you know, to the 40s and 50s. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about in general. Because somebody might ring in us or contact and say, well, he wasn't right about that. No, that didn't happen, you know, such mm. a thing. You have to sort of watch it. Well, it's, it's a memory thing, you know. It's a memory it's thing. Not, uh, it's not the inflation. It's yeah. not 100%. But, um, oh, yes. Come down High Street. Now, the first, the early pubs were open on High Street in the morning. Patrick Gibbons had a pub. That's where Henry O'Toole was later, Bank of Ireland now. Mm, that's right. right. Mm. Next door was the Fountain Bear, owned by Richard O'Malley. He came in from Landmore. He was open. Uh, at what time? Oh, they'd be open at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, okay. You see, after all this trouble going in, my father and the rest had gone in their nip of whiskey and out again. <laughs> now, Malone's, Mrs. Malone, Lord to mercy on the woman, her place is still there, the little wheel over the door. Right, yeah. She used to serve dinner, five shillings. Get a couple of chops, plenty to eat. You get a cup of tea across in Murphy's. Murphy's now, my cousin had a shop there, Heritage's. It's a hairdressing place now. Okay, yeah, Joyce's. Yeah, Joyce's is dead yeah. right. Well, next door was Mrs. Murphy. You went down a few steps, steps and you'd get a cup of tea there and slice of loaf or whatever, could go around the corner to Mrs O'Brien. Now, mm. as a matter of interest, the next place to Richard O'Malley was uh, Connolly. Connolly was uh, a chemist. That's where Doherty was later and Blaw Hughes now, right? Mm -hmm. Round the corner was Talbot's. It was a close place. That's where Sportswear is now. Port Hughes. West. Yeah, Port Hughes. West. Mm -hmm. Next to that was Miss Swift. There were two Swift sisters there. And uh, that lovely things in the wind, you know, but all, <laughs> I remember. And what kind of things had in the wind? Uh, little ornaments. Chairs and, and ornaments. Okay, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So this letter's with me, so come on, we'll go in. And in, and I'd like to buy that in the wind or such a thing. Yes. And I'll pay you again. Hello. <laughs> 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 Oh, you were raising her. <laughs> and Mrs. O'Brien then was next. You got a cup of tea there or whatever. Now, fair over on Shop Street, you had, there was a bear. I think it's about where. There were wards, is now, no? Betty yeah. Ward, was it? Yeah, where. Sintra is now, or something. Sintra, yeah. So roughly along there, you know. You carried on, you had Malloy's, you had the timber yard, coal. All that you remember that? I do. Yeah. yeah. Round the corner, the Delf glassware and all mm. that kind of thing. Hobans, King's Butchers. Yeah. In Malloy's, when you gave them the money, what happened to it? Uh, no, that was in John Gibbons's. Malloy's had it as well. Had, yeah. Had put the money in the bed. Yeah, zip, a zip wire, a zip wire, yeah, yeah. And the change came back. That's right. Yeah, and John Gibbons had as well on Shop Street. And uh, Malloy's had a pub then up where. Our John had the bear later, or where? Oh, yeah, okay, now. right, the big tree. Yeah, the big, big tree. tree. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, they had a bear there, and she was Michael Hoban's wife's sister. She was Tony from Nap as well. Oh, okay. Mrs. Millen. Mrs. Millen. Bear. A bear. Oh. And Sonny Horton, 
He had a place there for coal and turf and all that kind of thing. Martin John Lachlan was further up the street. He had a little shop and he was a hackney man. And you carry on up, uh, there was a shop, Bordenses, I think, on top of Peter Street. Peter Street, yeah. Yeah, on top of Peter, Tubbery as we call it now. On the left or the right? On the left? Uh, on the left corner. Going up, yeah, okay, right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think Jack Gavin had a shop now. Jack Gavin's daughter was married to Paddy Bordens. He died. He was he's dead for years. I think Mrs. Bordens is still living. Mm. But um, down along there, there was no more. Across the street, across the road there, in where McCarthy's is now, there was a pub there all the time. And actually, Michael Hoban had pumps just outside that pub or a little below it, one time on the corner. Mm -hmm. Pressure pumps. Mm -hmm. He had an agency for the Volkswagen, which he had down in the lane, Church Lane. You know, Tarnans is Merton McGrail's. It's a place that's for sale now there. The one on the corner, yeah? On the corner. Mm. That was where Dr. McGrail's home was a doctor in Dune Maeve when I came to Westport first. It was right. from that building, was it? Yeah. Okay. He was born and reared there. And next to that, Sean O'Connor had a supermarket. But that's late. We're talking later so now. I have to go back to, you have to, go back to what I'm on. Yeah. Because Sean O'Connor was on the fair green first, was he? Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. And then there was a shop on the corner, which uh, was Duffy's, and later Miss Kelsey, and later Clancy and Kenny. And you went round in the hotel was there. John Kelly was there. There was O'Malley's, I think, where Johnny Gerrishy was, and Gerrishy's where Paddy Dunne was. So Paddy Dunne married in his wife and Michael Callaghan's wife, father of John Callaghan, who wrote about the best town in Westport on the Irish Times. And Stephen Welch's wife on Mill Street were three sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, right, we'll work away across, we'll cross over there. And shop three, go back to the. Go back to again. And to the Octagon. To the out, yeah. Bicycle shop was there, Yeah, the, the bicycle shop, Jimmy Welch had a bicycle shop on the corner. Mm -hmm. John and McHale had an ice cream shop on the corner, where Frank Gillivan was later. Mm -hmm. uh, the yeah. town hall was there. There was a, before, this is before the tea goes here or anything like that, there was a pub around the corner there where uh, clerks were, you know. Jim Lyons was where Harvest... That place they called Christie's Harvest. Harvest yeah. yeah, Jim Lyons there. Yeah. yeah, Jim Lyons had a place there. Was it a shop? A, a little shop, and that's where I used to get my ice cream for a penny. A penny. I was a child, and he had a truck on the road as well. Eddie Lyons' <coughs> father, that was. Oh, okay. Of John's role. He went along there. Uh, Breeze was there. Uh, the Ulster Adelaide Bank, Allied Irish Bank. Well, they called it the Munster and Leinster in those times. The labour exchange of where you got that sort of thing was next door, Miss Hoban. John Gibbons's one shop, he had another shop on Bridge Street, and R.G. Brown, Tyler, round the corner to Charlie Hughes. Yeah. And what was in Gibbons's shop on Shop Street? Seeds and everything, everything you could think of. Mm, mm. A lovely man, John Gibbons, he came in from Lewis Versailles. And what was in Brown's? R.G. Brown. R.G. Brown. Well, of course, he yeah. was an auctioneer. He was an auctioneer, yeah. Yeah. Had he a shop I there? I think Mrs. Brown, she had a shop there. Yeah, okay, I'd yeah. say sort of clothes and things like mm. that, you know. Okay, yeah. And on High Street then, to go up the other side on High Street, McGing's was on the corner where the cleaners are now, mm. and they had a shoe shop. Okay. And the people across the road, they were friends of, and then, yeah, Franco McGing was across the road. She had no shop, you know, but she's just to connect it up. And so was that's she, that uh, area around. And did Franco work? Was she, she did. What did she work at? Or do you know? Well, I don't know what she worked. She used to be always down in Ashland when I was there. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's right. She's very friendly with them. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And up High Street on the left-hand side going up? Just uh, two shops. One shop at that time. I've, I've stayed with it. Mm. My, my mother's first cousin, Peggy Hedersey. And What were they selling? Everything, flour, parlour, okay. bread, mm. cigarettes, everything you could think. That's where we used to shop, actually. Mm. 
So that's the that's uh, taking that area now around there. Mm. We go back.